Okay. So I want to talk a little more about what these numbers mean and then look at some occurrences of the numbers on the screen and what meaning we can derive from that. So the 555 representing humanity, organic life, human consciousness, earth. Five represents humanity. Um, number one, it's the human form. Like your hand has five extremities. Each hand has five extremities. Each foot has five toes. And then your whole body shape is a pentagram, like a starfish shape. You have your two arms, two legs, and your head. So <clears throat> you have the five extremities, like the Vitruvian man, where he's standing with his arms and legs splayed out. So that's five, the human form. Um... And these are also both 15 and 666 are both what they call triangular numbers. And that just means that they divide perfectly into three. Um, and I want to think for a second about the story in the Bible where Satan offers Jesus Christ all the kingdoms of the earth. He brings them up to the top of the mountain and... He says, you know, if you bow down, worship me, or whatever, you can have all this, all the kingdoms of the earth I will give to you. And this is about this, which takes precedence, the Christ consciousness or the Antichrist, the 666 consciousness. Because like I said in the sign video, a government is a machine. In order to accomplish anything, it must extract resources, and there must be a formula um, for it to do this. There must be a machine set up. A bureaucracy, a government, civilization itself is a machine. It's an extension of the environment, the 666 material realm consciousness. So that's why Satan has control over all the civilization, all the cities and he offers that to Christ. Like if you turn your awareness, if you reach a high level of awareness and you invert, put your ego up where your crown should be, your will, Keter, um, you can use this high level of awareness to dominate the material world, bend it to your will. But this will always be kind of torturous, an inversion, a self-betrayal, because the, uh, oh, the truth that comes with that level of awareness is that the meaning is in the experience, in the movement, not in the material, not in the data set. So you could use this power, this high level of awareness to dominate the material world, but it'll always be kind of an inversion, a turning against yourself. So he offers Christ all the kingdoms of the world if he'll bow down, if he'll go underneath the two-step binary consciousness. But what does Christ say? Christ says, get behind me, Satan. Three over two. He says, no, Satan says, bow down and worship me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth, the 666 realm. Christ says, no, get behind me, Satan. Three over two. Uh, so it's also like, I see this as like three over two. So two thirds, the 666 orientation is the loss system information loss energy loss this parasitic um, nature of the system it's a it's a loss you know it's not a whole 666 it's only two-thirds but the three over two is a, a sum greater than the parts like I said something ineffable enters into human choice a sum greater than the parts, rather than this loss system.
Like, you've heard the expression, idle hands do the devil's work. This is exactly what we're talking about. When you're not consciously making choices, you're operating mechanically, algorithmically, in the two over three operating system, the 666 orientation. Idle hands do the devil's work. You're serving the mechanical, the beast system when you're not uh, making conscious choices all the time. You're not aware. Um, and I'm not sure, I didn't re research this properly, but I feel like there could be references to this in the scriptures also, like, when you hear, when they say things like a portion and a half a portion, or a time and a half a time, like, I see that as the 1.5, the one and a half, the portion and a half a portion. And, like I said, the 1.5, the 555 five, five terminates. It's, um, we can know the set, the, there's an answer. The 666, six, six, the 999, nine, nine, the 333, three, three, the one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds continue on forever. And it also is the spiral. You know, the six, the nine is a is the spiral. Six and nine revolving. So yeah, we want to make as many choices as we can. <clears throat> Even if you're not sure it's the right choice, just make a choice. Guide your thoughts, guide your action with your will consciously. You can always walk out of a house you built. You can you can't walk into a house you never built. This is why it, it takes me so long, so long for me to get everywhere because I always say I um I take wrong turns on purpose just to see what I'm not supposed to. You can't plan it out though, or the the devil will, will anticipate it. You just right at the last second, eh, just just make a wrong turn, just see what you're not supposed to see. I think it was in that movie Adjustment Bureau or something. Like if they go somewhere they're not supposed to. There's just nothing there. Like the scene isn't set up yet. But I don't know. I take wrong turns on purpose all the time. I'll leave, uh, maybe if work's like 40 minutes away, I'll leave like three hours early. Just, I just like driving too, traveling, walking around. But yeah, I make wrong turns on purpose just to see what I'm not supposed to. Something else I want to say about analog digital. Since... In, from our perspective within this dimension, it is a dichotomy. The two halves of our consciousness and the two halves of reality. The analog system and the digital system. But if we zoom out and we take a more um, non-personal perspective... It, we can see that it's a gradient. So wherever you are dimensionally, looking down is always going to be digital, and looking up, the natural laws and forces of nature of the universe proceed from top down. So a digital device that we create um, in this reality originates in this dimension and it proceeds downwards. It exists from the dimension it's created in downwards. Analog features of our environment actually are an image of this of of a feature in a higher dimension. So imagine we're designing a video game, a computer program, okay? It's always going to be based on the environment we know but simplified. So there's got to be a light source in the game. And you could change it. You could say, oh, let's make the sun purple. Or let's make it a black sun. It's like a black light. But either way, it's going to be an... an see, this is an, that's why that's the other definition of analog. Like an analog is a, a copy or something similar. An analog to... Um, like analogy. This thing is analogous to this thing. 
So you could change the sun. It could be purple or blue. It could be huge or really small or there could be three suns. But either way, it's, it's still going to be an image of the real sun in your organic environment. And it's going to proceed downwards into the next successive digital environment. I've said before that virtual environments must have boundaries. Virtual environments have boundaries. We have boundaries. Okay, the 60th parallel, the going up boundary, the time boundary, the going down boundary. We, we have boundaries, just like a virtual environment. So there's two possibilities. Number one, um, we are in a virtual environment modeled off of an organic environment in which there are no limits, but that, that doesn't really work. Much more probable scenario is that our virtual environment with boundaries is modeled off another virtual environment with boundaries, just simplified. But at some point, there is the true timeline. Like I said, it's not a hall of mirrors. We have entered into this tunneling downwards dimensionally to understand ourselves, but it's not a hall of mirrors. There, there must be an, organ an ultimately uh, true organic environment. But so the sun, the moon, if you make a simulation, th these things are going to proceed downwards into your digital virtual environment. There's going to be analogs of the organic features of the environment, the moon. There's got to be a ground. You could say, oh, let's make the ground like zero friction, slippery. Let's make the ground all spikes in the game. But either way, you need a ground. You need a light source. You need a trees, energy source. Let's make the trees into candy canes. Okay, but there's still going to be trees. Like, there's nothing new under the sun. We don't really invent anything. We discover things. And tunneling down dimensionally, um, all the features of the virtual environment are going to be analogs of features of a higher dimension. So the ultimate analog of this system, the analog of the projector, is the sun. That's the ultimate source of this whole projection. So the sun is the ultimate analog symbol that proceeds upwards through all the dimensions up to the true organic environment. This is why the sun is a portal. Okay, now we're going to look for occurrences of this 3 over 2 in some of the cards. So this is on the left. Um, the like Freemasonic Kabbalah, Kabbalah Tree of Life, the two pillars, Jaqueen and Boaz, the Justice and Mercy pillar. Um, yeah, this is the what would you call it? Yeah, the Kabbalistic Freemasonic version. But you'll see the third pillar, choice, um, you know, a conscious choice with your will, crown up at the top is broken. The third pillar is broken. Connecting your, your foundation, crown, your crown to your, to your foundation. So... This is like the 2 over 3, machine intelligence. This is like the broken tree of life or whatever. And you can see the dotted lines, they have an upside down pyramid. Should be a pyramid with the top at your crown, but we have the base, the lower two-thirds elevated to the crown. This animal, machine consciousness, the base of the pyramid inverted up to the top. And this has never been explained to my satisfaction either. 
the eye of providence or the eye of God or whatever. But what I think it means is this the missing top third of the pyramid. The top third. The 33%. That last third. The, um, the human choice. Awareness. Conscious choice. Is is what they're what they're showing it also reminds me of this picture Mount Maru but it's also I think it's you know a model of the earth as well the waters above the waters below and the electromagnetic field the matrix the eyes the sun projecting energy down into the material world, the bottom two-thirds of the pyramid. Same thing here. Same thing here with the fasces. And look at the, in the crest, the top half of the crest, three clouds, three mountain peaks, and two down at the bottom, the pick and the hammer. So three over two. And the eye again at the top. Established 1876. It's the same year as the Philadelphia World's Fair, I believe, also, right? So back to this, this is the, the tower is your body, the body, the tower, the temple, the house, the house of God. And look how similar it is to the Masonic tree of life. The, see the crown and the crown on top of the tower, the broken third pillar to your will, your, your, conscious choice and the crown broken off of the tower with the lightning bolt and look at the Maison du card see in the top half the three windows the one above the two like the top third of the pyramid the awareness the human choice becoming the prime mover creating reality, improbability, unpredictability, and in the bottom, the two, the binary, three windows over the two, like the twins, and the two nuggets of gold at the bottom of the tower. You see the similarity in these two drawings? Remember this little fuck from Harry, Harry Potter? Dobby is Dobby the house elf. Dobby is body, the house elf. In the beginning, he serves the Draco, the reptilian, the body, the 666, until he um, <clears throat> is rescued by enlightened light wizard Harry Potter. And it's like that Matthew 26 Bible verse. If, uh, you know, thine eye be single, if your eye be full of light, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is darkness, uh, your whole body will be filled with darkness. Dobby, the house elf, the, the tower, the house, the, the house of God. I think that's what that, that, little ghoul is about and it's number 16 so like I said before it's 88 which is like the tw Twin Towers number but it also sums up um, to a 7 so this is the 3 over 2 the upwards orientation energy improbability analog organic orientation 7 
is like the personality of this card. The Chariot card. Again, it's number seven. Um, this is a mirrored card. Uh, certain things, just when you look at it, after doing it for a while, just becomes obvious. Certain things are either have been mirrored or are meant to be mirrored. You can see that there's some kind of pattern that will emerge or has been created through mirroring. And this is a mirrored card vertically as well as horizontally. It's divided like perfectly in half um, from top to bottom and from left to right. It's pretty much almost a perfect mirror. So the three over two, the three face, human faces up top over the two animal faces in the bottom. The organic human consciousness, three over the animal machine consciousness, two. <clears throat> so many numbers and little symbols in these cards. You could go on. You could go on, you know, sieving meaning out of it for a lifetime. But, so it's a seven. It's got the three over two. The three human faces over the two animal faces. Also, there's a lot of ancient teachings about consciousness lessons that use the carriage or the chariot. Where, um, like, you have the horse pulling the carriage, a driver and a master, up in the top of the carriage. And the master is like your, your will, your highest command line. And he gives directions to the driver, which is like, I believe would be your like emotional command line layer, issuing from your will. And the, the driver has to communicate to the horse, with his um, crop or speaking to it or whatever, the driver is to communicate to the to the horse, which would be like your thoughts, the workings of your mind, and the horse has to be hitched up, attached securely to the carriage itself to pull the carriage. And your consciousness and everything else follows along with the carriage, with your body. And in order for it, the, the carriage to have direction, it needs to have a master. Um, you need to be operating from the will, the highest command line. Um, and these things all have to be working properly together and functioning well together in order for the whole carriage to operate properly and to be directed um, towards a goal. The devil card, number 15, just like this, 1.5, 15, 5, 5, 5, 15, and this is the 15 card. Um, the devil characters is standing up top uh, and this is, I, I would think represents the world the ball at the bottom the the alembic and the pyramid underneath just like the um you know the pyramid with the third up top see the devil has three human faces the head the one in her stomach, or his stomach, it's got a dick as well, obviously. And the face in the knees. Um, above the two imps, which are bound to the material world. The two, they're animal-like. Animal-like. Bound to the 666. The three human faces of the devil over the two animal faces card 15 and just the pyramid is the model representing the world and the alembic 
and the devil standing above it. And this this isn't like necessarily evil. Like like the Baphomet, it, that's kind of nonsense. It's just symbolism. Like it's not evil. They can't they can't have five. That's too fundamental. Uh, like aspect of reality. They, they can't just have five. A pentagram, a pentagon isn't evil. It's it's just one of the basic symbols of reality. But you see but it is kind of like the devil to them when you are make consciously aware, making unpredictable choices because you it is a devil in a way to the system. Because the system is the 666 system. That is the world. So when you're standing above the world, you are like the devil to the system. Um, it's like you remember in that movie Inception, if you've ever seen that, uh, when they're in the dream, all the NPCs in the dream all attack them every time. Slowly, they're always chasing them. And... They call them projections of the subconscious, and they, since they're lucid in the dream, aware, three over two, um, that it's it it identifies them as like a foreign entity, and it attacks them like antibodies. So it, it, it that that's why it's the devil card is fifteen, the five five five, the three over two, the you know, illuminated, whatever you want to call it, consciousness over the, the good, the good, the little antlered, animal-eared imps with tails, you know, bound to this material world by their necks, collared to it, chained to it. The devil stands on top of it. And the, the hermaphroditic, the transgender aspect is, um, <clears throat> it's a symbol for transcending the duality, the Pepsi or Coke, Democrat or Republican. Um, you know, it's the, the breaking out of that binary system. The Wheel of Fortune. Like my, Matt said, why has the Wheel of Fortune been on TV for 36 years? Must be a truth drop in there. So this is card number ten, another multiple of five. Five, five, ten. Um, the wheel of fortune, the wheel of time. Water is time. It's uh, it's floating on the water, and the uh, the two animals down below are scrambling, always scrambling the loop. The gerbil wheel. But again, we see the devil-like character up top. He's sitting still, like I said, outside of time. Human choice, your conscious will, this occurs out outside of time, outside the time dimension. So he's sitting still up at the top above the wheel of time, the wheel of fortune while the two animals are scrambling up and scrambling down. He knows that it's just a cycle. You don't go up or down, you just, he rises above it. So again, like I said, looking out and looking in, like a, the crank, like working the wheel. Like you look out, you look in, you push out, you pull back in towards yourself. And again, crown, if we look back to the left, the, the cr broken crown pillar, the upside-down pyramid, and look at the, the card, 10 card, 5-5, five, five, and look at the crown on top of the devil guy with five points. Okay, now some screen stuff. The Pixie song, Monkey Gone to Heaven, on from the album... They say Doolittle, but it's not called Doolittle. It's called Doolittle 33 and a third. 
like a LP speed, but 33 and a third, the point three through three through three, the, the, the third, the that top third, the human choice awareness, the crown. Um, Monkey Gone to Heaven is a song, and that's the, see the cover of the record? I have it sitting over there on the stereo, but I didn't feel like taking a picture of it and putting it on my flash drive and putting it on the computer. But it's the monkey with the crown, the halo, and it's got the numbers 5, 6, and 7. Monkey Gone to Heaven is a song by American alternative rock band Pixies, and it's the seventh track on their 19th seven. Seven on the 1989 album Doolittle, Doolittle 33 and a third. This was on the Wikipedia. Santiago then begins a guitar solo lasting 17 seconds. Um, 17 is the seventh prime. Seven. Francis later explained. Francis later expanded on the significance of the lyrics in an interview to Alternative Press, saying, It's a reference from what I understand to be Hebrew numerology. Hebrew numerology. The Kabbalah. Uh, you know. Kabbalistic. And I don't know a lot about it or any of it, really. I just remember someone telling me of the supposed fact that in the Hebrew language, especially in the Bible, you can find lots of references to man in the fifth and Satan in the sixth and God in the seventh. I didn't go to the library and figure it out. The song's numerology is alluded to on the single's cover, which features figures of five, six, and seven, and also a monkey with a halo. No, it says it here. Ben Cicero, author of Doolittle 33 and a third. Blah, blah, blah. Neptune, the god of the throne. Um, I'll show the lyrics real quick. If man is five, if man is five, if man is five, then the devil is six, the devil is six, the devil is six, and God is seven, and God is seven, and God is seven. This monkey's gone to heaven. Um, so 17 seconds, the seventh track, and this repeating of the five 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 there's also just like a slipknot song five 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 six 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 there's a jimmy world song there's a fish song there's a xx extension song but i don't really feel like showing them you get the idea Okay, and apparently 555 is the approximate height of the Washington Monument in feet, another pyramid, and Adolf Hitler's membership number in the DAP. Um, and they have an entry in Wikipedia about all the phone numbers in movies. Telephone companies began encouraging the producers of television shows and movies to use the 555 prefix for fictional telephone numbers by the 1960s. They say there's two. There's a shitload of examples. I'm going to do a video about that in the future. But it's um, it's like an identity number, it seems to be. Uh, I always see it as car numbers, phone numbers. It is used constantly in movies. And it's bullshit that it should, they don't just pick it randomly. There's There's always a reason. Even if they don't know there's a reason, there's still a reason. Okay, some 666 stuff. 666 is the sum of the first 36 natural numbers. And thus, it is a triangular number. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, so on, all the way up to 36. 36 equals 666. Um... 666 is the sum, 666 is the sum of the squares of the first seven primes. It's some kind of, um, it's like an expansion of, uh, a false expansion on the, on the sevens. The Roman numeral for 666, DCLXVI. 
I've heard Matt mention this and other people before, has exactly one occurrence of all symbols whose value is less than a thousand in decreasing order. It's strange. It's all of them perfectly, one of each in decreasing order. Um, it's the sum of the numbers on a roulette, a roulette wheel. The original name of Macintosh 7 Dust Computer Virus, Aleister Crowley. Revelation 13, 18, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. The beast. For that number, for the, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. The beast, the animal, machine consciousness. Second uh, Chronicles 9.13 Now the weight of gold which came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold. Resource acquisition. The sons of Adonikam. 666. Ezra 2.13 I'm not sure about that one. Revelation 13, 16 18. It's the same as the top verse. It's just, and he causes all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark. Either the name of the beast or the number of his name. What all I think this means, a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, I think it's just the mark is the way they act and the way they think is the mark of the beast the 666 um beast consciousness you'll but the mark on the right hand is the actions their hand and the mark on their forehead is the way they think that's the, that's what marks them identifies them as the 666 consciousness there are exactly six sixes in 666 to the sixth power. Um, it has some relation to phi, the golden ratio. I don't really understand all this, but phi equals negative two sine 666, or negative two cosine six times six times six. And all these ones at the bottom, which I don't understand. But I guess it's interesting mathematically. And the original Greek used the symbols chi, xi, I think it's sigma, isn't it? Stigma. But it looks like kind of like sex. But if you flip it upside down, that's this 666, six, six, I guess. Or maybe it's 616, six, I think, in some versions. But maybe that's what's in the clouds in Lion King. 777, Lamech, the father of Noah, lived for 777 years. I think that might be a reference to maybe the way things were before the flood. Um, like in ancient times, uh, we were in a higher, higher dimension, higher awareness state. The numbers 3 and 7 are both considered perfect numbers under Hebrew tradition. 7, so 3, 7. Um, according to the Orthodox Study Bible, 777 7, 7 represents the threefold per perfection of the Trinity. Um, there's 777 7, 7 and other... Kabbalistic writings of Aleister Crowley. Seven chakras, seven planes of creation, seven days of the week. Um, the Boeing 777. Which is funny because like the 747 is a 711. Just like 837 is a 711. 711 is 77, and then you have the 777. 
gambling and luck, that's a jackpot. 777 is used to indicate a jackpot in gambling. And the Crowley books. Lieber 777. And I know this is going to be a long ass video. I'll try and go fast. But I want to do towers now. Because remember in the beginning we're talking about the, the tower. The third. The tower. Card number uh, 16. Which sums to a 7. So we're going to look at. Towers, the 777 Tower, uh, originally known as Citicorp Tower, okay, Citibank Tower. We're going to see wh what these buildings are. 777 South Figueroa Street in the Financial District. This is in Los Angeles, developed in 1991. It's like a 9-11 number. Um, owner, Brookfield Office Properties. Remember this, okay? Remember that name, Brookfield. 52 story, 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay, the tenants. AIG, Brown and Riding, Marsh McLennan, RBC Capital Market, Zurich. These are all insurance companies. I'm really starting to think insurance runs the world. You're, all these buildings are going to be all insurance companies, and they all have something to do with 7-Eleven. And insurance is like... For one, you have to do it, you know? It's the it's the law. It's like a lifetime mafia beatdown. Um, and it's also like, you know, that ne the need we have of things to be predictable. Harm reduction, re you know, protecting your re yourself, your resources. Um, so... Brown and Riding is memory hold. Page does not exist. That there's tons of broken links on Wikipedia now because so much shit got in memory hold. There's tons of red links all over. RBC Capital Markets is Royal Bank of Canada. Royal Bank of Canada. Okay. Zurich. Swiss Insurance Company, um, Switzerland's largest insurer. Um, they're crooks, just like everyone else. No big surprise. Bid rigging, price fixing, which involved all these insurance companies. I think this was AIG and everyone else also. And uh, but you know, as usual, the fines are less than what they make doing it, so it's basically an encouragement. Um, on 24 October 2002, Zurich, North America hosted a ceremony at the 9-11 Tribute Center, honoring the winners of its 2012 Camp Awards. A program created as a living legacy to the four employees killed on 9-11. So they had employees killed on 9-11. That pretty much they all did. All right, Marsh McLennan. Um, another huge insurance company. Headquartered in New York, but they're in this building. 777 Tower in Los Angeles. And at the time of the 2001, in the United States, corporation held offices on eight floors, 93 to 100. Flight 11, its offices spanned the entire impact zone. Everyone present in the company's offices on the day of the attack died. As all stairwells and elevators passing through the impact zone were destroyed or blocked by the crash. The firm lost 295 employees and 66 contractors. So, you know, if this is real, then it's got, you know, it's 
knew too much. Sometimes you try to be nice and look what it gets you. Okay, AIG. Well, who is AIG? Um, founded in Shanghai. It's founded in China by an American. It was originally called American Asiatic Underwriters in Shanghai. Um, in 1992, so then they were kicked out at some point, but in 1992, AIG received the first foreign insurance license granted in over years by, in, in over 40 years by the Chinese government, um, back in China. In February 2000, so just before 7-Eleven. AIG created a strategic advisory venture team with the Blackstone Group and Kissinger Associates. Kissinger. The bailout. Um, included acquisition international lease finance corporation, provider of leased aircraft to the airline industry. I'm going to refer to you to the Chinese government. Got nothing there for the bailout. Hold on. Okay, still on AIG. Then the bailout. In late 2008, the federal government bailed out AIG for 180 billion and technically assumed control. The government is technically assumed control. This is all just nonsense. Theft. This is the. This is the. This is, this is, this is, here we go, okay. On March 17, 2009, AIG compounded public cynicism concerning the too-big-to-fail firm's bailout, announcing that it would pay its executives over $165 million in executive bonuses. Total bonuses for the financial unit could reach $450 million, and bonuses for the entire company, $1.2 billion. Newly installed President Barack Obama, who had voted for TARP as a senator, responded to the planned payments by saying, It's hard to understand how derivative traders at AIG warranted any bonuses, much less $165 million in extra pay. How do they justify this outrage to the taxpayers who are keeping the company afloat? Yeah, guess what? The taxpayers didn't agree to it. And guess what? You're the government. You control the fucking company. The fuck are you talking about? Who are you asking? Are you talking to yourself? Do you even listen to what you're reading off that teleprompt? Okay, so AIG and these other guys are in the 777 tower, but I but AIG in New York is 70 Pine Street, the American International Building. 70 Pine, the Pine Club, Twin Pines, 7, Pine Street. It was the tallest building in Lower Manhattan until the 1970s when the World Trade Center was completed. So this building, 70 Pine, AIG, Insurance Runs the World, was the tallest building until the World Trade Center was completed. And upon the 7-Eleven attacks, it regained the status of the tallest downtown building until the completion of the new One World Trade. City Services sold the building to AIG in 1976. It served as, a yeah, it served as AIG's world headquarters until its financial struggles until 2008. So this, yeah, this, so this building, the tallest building until... And after 7-Eleven, 70 Pine Street is their, is their headquarters. And AIG is Kissinger Associates, basically. Or, you know, they're related. New York-based international geopolitical consulting firm found, founded and run by Henry Kissinger. Clients. American Express, Atlantic Richfield, Chase Manhattan, Coca-Cola, Lehman Brothers, Merck, Volvo, Warburg, you know, you, you get the idea. Uh, 
His partner is McLarty, chief of staff under Bill Clinton, established by Rockefeller in 1965. Count uh, McLarty is a member of Counts the Americas, um, established by Rockefeller in the same building as Blackstone Group. Once threatened to sue Congress to resist the subpoena for its client list. It's a joke anyway. Let's see who works for Kissinger Associates. Prominent staff. L. Paul Bremer. Remember this dude from Iraq? Former managing director and former Iraq director of Reconstruction. Lawrence Eagleburger, U.S. Secretary, Secretary of State. We got a CIA deputy director. Managing Director of Time Magazine, Bill Richardson, Governor of New Mexico, Energy Secretary, UN Ambassador, John o John Brennan, Director of the CIA, Lord Carrington, former NATO Secretary General, Eric Roll, S.G. Warburg and Co., Chairman, U.S. Treasury Secretary. Well, so, how, how do you distinguish between the imaginary financial entities and the imaginary government entities. It's, you know, it's just all the same people. It's, so, you know, this is all tied in with 7-Eleven, and this is the 777 Tower, and the 70 Pine Tower. Uh, you've probably seen this before, of course. The 666 Fifth Avenue between 52nd and 53rd Streets. 52nd, that's a 7 number. 41 story office building, a 5 number. Headquarters for DC Comics was at 666 Fifth Avenue. And Doubleday was headquartered at 666 Fifth Avenue. Um, 616 in certain uh, papyruses of the Book of Revelation is the number of the beast. Earth 616 is the name of the primary continuity. Earth 616 in Marvel Comics. 666616. Uh, they use it in DC also in Crisis of in Infinite Earths, and DC is in 666 Fifth Avenue. When I was reading this book by Robert Anton Wilson, the Illuminati Trilogy, which is all tied in with the cards, the Steve Jackson Illuminati cards, I open it first when I, the first time I start reading it, I open the cover, published 666 Fifth Avenue. Another interesting thing about this building is... It's sitting on a subway, its own subway entrance. Um, so I think there's multiple things going on with these buildings. Number one is there's some kind of energy center, literally energy gathering. And the proper people must be kept in control of these towers no matter what. It has nothing to do with money. It doesn't matter how it looks to the public. It's got to be done. That's why they're, they'll sell for twice what they're worth or twice what the rent is, can never, can never be recouped. It doesn't matter. These need to be controlled by the right people, and they're sitting on underground stuff, entrances to the underground. And I think a lot of these uh, probably entrances to underground bases are in regular tunnels, regular bridge and tunnels and subways and stuff like that. And, um, you just, you just gotta know where to look, you know? So these buildings are important. Also just the symbology. You could say, oh, you could name any building that. No, you can't go try to do it. Go try to name your building 666 Fifth Avenue in New, in New York. So it does hold power. They, they're sitting on the, the symbology of the number. Jared Kushner bought this building. Trump's uh, son-in-law. Brookfield paid about $1.1 in upfront rent. 
Millennium Management. See, they're managing the Millennium. And remember, I said to remember that name, Brookfield. So this is the, you know, basically the real, uh, this is some kind of step in. There's another company called Vornado. And they, they swoop in whenever they need to a loan, a big loan. Make sure the right people keep control. But Brook, so this is 666 Fifth Avenue, Brookfield. Who owns the 777 Tower? Brookfield. Brookfield. Who owns the 666 Tower? They say Kushner, but it's Brookfield. Brookfield paid, Brookfield paid for it. The same company. What are the chances of that? You say pretty, oh, pretty good. They're a huge uh, company. Yeah, but, but they're not going to lend us $2 billion to build a, a 777 tower on 7th Street or 17th Street. Um, sale the building to Kushner Properties for $1.8 billion, 666, 18. At the time, the highest price ever paid for an individual in Manhattan. Look, Matt, this is for you, Matt. A month before the 666 sale, Tishman bought Stuyvesant Town Peter Cooper Village, Peter Stuyvesant, for $5.4 billion, nine, which was the biggest real estate deal in U.S. history. A month before the 666 sale, a month before they sold that building, they bought Stuyvesant Town, Peter Cooper Village. Sale was unusual for several reasons. Yeah, you could say that again. His father's in jail. All this other stuff you've heard about. It, the building had no official ask price and was never officially marketed for sale. Like that That's what I mean about well, we can't buy this. This has to stay in the control of the proper Android's hands. The majority of the deal is put together in less than a week, an unprecedentedly short time frame of do the necessary due diligence for such a major deal. Kushner put down just fifty million out of two billion, one point eight billion, and borrowed the remaining. And this is another one. And at the end of 2011, Kushner brought in Vornado Realty Trust, which purchased 49.5 equity stake in the tower for just 80 million. Like what? What? Is, why, why for just 80 million? And the assumption of half the building's debt. That's why. And it says something about they paid all the debt down at like 20 cents on the dollar or something. It's it's this weird thing. So Vornado comes in Brookfield Vornado. Vornado additionally agreed to buy the rest of the retail space from Carlisle Group, paying seven hundred seven million in their remaining stake. It, 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 they they pay down the debt. This other entity pays down the debt, and it seems like they're trading it back and forth to each other. Some of the alleged terms of the deal were called unusually favorable, including an exit for Vornado Realty Trust and retirement of the Kushner organization's remaining debt at 20 cents on the dollar, raising concerns about the political influence of the Donald Trump presidential administration due to Jared Kushner's position. And, you know, Jared Kushner is Netanyahu's godson. So, no, we can't own these buildings. Brookfield Properties, Vornado. In a Brookfield property signed a 99-year lease for the property, effectively taking full ownership of the building. This is in 2008. Brookfield ta takes full ownership of the building, and they pay over $500 million less than what Kushner had paid a decade before. Um, and there's all this stuff, if you look into it, like the... He there's it's not for sale. It's the biggest deal for a building in history, and the something like the rents they can collect there don't even cover like half of the interest or something on the loan. But Brookfield and Vornado, these entities swoop in and pay all the debt down and then sell it back to them for nothing, and they sell it back and forth. And okay, and so if we have a seven 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 tower. In the West, in L.A., uh, we have the 666 Fifth Avenue 
in New York, what would tie them together? We got we got the 555 California Street in San Francisco, 555 Tower. And then we have 555 17th Street. 17 is the seventh prime in Denver. So we got Denver. Uh, L.A. and San Francisco and New York, this triangle across the country. The 555 Tower is a 52-story, 7, 779 feet, 52 stories, 7. Um, fourth tallest building in the city, largest by floor area. So it's the largest building in the city. It's not the tallest, but it's the largest in San Francisco. Completed in 1969. Um, you know, Space Odyssey, groundbreaking, 7-Eleven. Tallest building west of the Mississippi until the completion of the Trans-American Pyramid, which is interesting also. So this was the tallest building until the Trans-America Pyramid, which I can't believe I lost the pictures. But you got to look at the Trans-America Pyramid, which replaces this as the tallest building in the West. Uh, it's also featured prominently in Invasion of the Body Snatchers movie. And it's just a gigantic fucking glass pyramid. Um, okay, 555 California Street. Um, Bank of America. It's, another ins it's all insurance. The banks in San Francisco. Headquarters of Bank of America. Uh, a 70% interest was acquired by Vornado. Vornado. Vornado owns 666, okay? Brookfield, Vornado. A 70% interest was acquired by Vornado Realty Trust from foreign investors in March 2007 with a 30% limited partnership interest still owned by Donald Trump, managed by Vornado Realty Trust. Make sure it stays in the right hands. Bails you out. Money's not an issue. Out front, uh, colloquial known as the Triple Five, meant to display the wealth, power, and importance of Bank of America. Giant sculpture out front. The Banker's Heart, 200-ton black granite sculpture. Okay? Nearly the entire block, the skyscraper, banking hall, plaza, stairways, and sidewalks is clad in costly, polished, or rough carnelian granite. Vornado, Donald Trump, 666-555-777, Towers. You really think they don't know, they know nothing about what I'm talking about? You think these numbers are not some sort of source of power to them? And you like again, like I said, Denver. Um five 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 seventeenth Street, Denver, the Anaconda, Anaconda Tower. Building stands the seventh, seventh tallest building. And it was the tallest building in the city at the time of its completion. Until it was surpassed by the five two two foot again, like 707 17th Street. Like, you see what I'm saying? 17 is the 17th prime. You see all these, how they all tie in together. 555 777. 555 17th Street has been installed with several environmentally green features, including a 600 ton flat plate heat exchanger. There's some, some kind of energy collection going on with these buildings. So that's all I got for the for the towers. Um, but it's interesting how it's like Denver, LA, San Francisco, and New York. Um, and like the 666 is in New York. And the, the 777 is in the West, right? In Los Angeles. And then you got the 555 in Denver. Like a like a triangle across the country. I, something else I just thought was freaking hilarious. 
All right, the video's over. This is just real quick ending, funny side note thing. But okay, the, the Pine Club, right? Remember the Pine Club? Twin Pines? God bless the Pine Club. Look, I was looking at um, the Secret Service code names for presidential candidates. Hillary Clinton, Evergreen, Pine, the Pine Club. Hillary Clinton is Evergreen. George Bush Sr. is Timberwolf, okay? The Pine Club, Timberwolf and Evergreen. Hillary Clinton and George Sr. See, Bill Clinton is Eagle, like, I don't know. Doesn't play, it doesn't work really with my Pine Club thing, probably because he's just in, he has, he has nothing to do with anything. He's just like, remember the Illuminati cards? He's on the leash by Hillary. So Timberwolf and Evergreen. And look, for my Guided by Voices video, okay? God bless the Pine Club. Commitment Trailblazer. God bless the Pine Club. Commitment Trailblazer. Your trail is quite a puzzle. George W. Bush is trailblazer. And you are such a daredevil. Look, when Hillary Clinton ran for president, look at this. Her running mate, this guy, dude, Tim Kaine. Commitment trailblazer. Your trail is quite a puzzle, and you are such a daredevil. And you are such a collector. God bless the Pine Club. So, we got Evergreen and Timberwolf. And I was driving behind this guy on my way to work yesterday. Alright, that's it for this one. I'm done.